international affairs journalist Dana Lewis. Dana, um, what do you think President Putin will make of this uh, extra military assistance the US is giving Ukraine? You know, I think he is becoming increasingly angry, angry and outwardly so and frustrated. And I think when you take a look at some of the comments that, that were televised today from President Putin, uh, they are unprecedented. By the way, President Biden uh, was just asked by reporters if he thought that uh, President Putin was a war criminal, and he has now called him a war criminal. Um, President Putin uh, has, has characterized all of this uh, not as the West would see it as a defense of Ukraine, but he sees it as an attack on Russia. He sees it as he used words today like an economic blitzkrieg to talk about the economic sanctions. And that's really important language in Russia. This is a country that fought the Germans in World War II and lost 30 million people. So any parallels with the denazification of Ukraine or economic sanctions being a blitzkrieg, you know, call up echoes of the past and the great war for Russians. And Putin uses it for some effect because he's obviously concerned about his domestic audience in Russia and how people now view increasingly the images that they are able to see on social media of these attacks in Ukraine on cities in a very negative way, and some of them seeing it with anger. Um, you know, he, he said today that Western sanctions have one aim, the destruction of Russia. All of this, President Putin's war, which he launched in Ukraine, he is saying that this is all about the destruction of Russia and that he is defending Russia. And he, he said the West dropped its mask of civility and began to act belligerently. It begs comparison, and I'm quoting here, it begs comparison to the anti-Semitic pogroms of the Nazis, he said. So, I mean, some very unusual and angry language from President Putin, who was actually almost having trouble catching his breath today um, as he seemed to go off script and rant about the West and its support for, the U for Ukraine. So strong rhetoric coming from Putin, but there has been some mention of a breakthrough in talks between Russia and Ukraine, a 15-point plan to try to bring an end to the conflict. What do you make of that? Is that too optimistic? I think it's too optimistic, but there is... I think both sides are reading some progress in the sense that they now have things to talk about, and that would be the demilitarization of Ukraine, uh, but Ukraine also sees that with a caveat that they would still be able to maintain an army uh, and navy, but there would be no outside forces in there. Um, and then also Ukraine would drop apparently its notion of and desire and thirst to join NATO. So they would shelve that for a, a, a period, which I think is still being negotiated. And, and here's where the giant you know, gap comes in these talks. And that would be that the Ukrainians will absolutely insist that the Russians in, withdraw from all of the territory that they are holding now. And that is a sizable territory, whether you look at it from the Donbass and the Crimea that was taken in 2014, or all of this area along the Black Sea and in the north and the east that they have taken since they started this war, uh, although failing to take any major, major cities so far. OK, so still a, a huge gap there between the two sides. We heard from both uh, Presidents Zelensky so. and Biden uh, earlier today. Biden travels to Europe next week to hold meetings with NATO. What's his message to Putin? Well, I think his message to Putin is that you're a war criminal and we're going to fight for freedom and that NATO, 30 countries, uh, will absolutely stay involved in the conflict not boots on the ground, uh, not an air air corridor or 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 a uh, uh, or or any aircraft in the skies over Ukraine, but short of that, uh, NATO is going to do everything they can to support Ukraine and try to stop the Russian war machine. So I think you'll hear some very specific conversations about. Um, this 800 million, which is now a billion dollars, if you take a look at it over the last week, that the Americans have committed to some kind of uh, air defense system that will clear the sky. Because if NATO doesn't want to do it themselves, they want to help the Ukrainians. So there you start getting into these conversations about the S-300, and a number of uh, NATO countries have them, Bulgaria, Greece, Slovakia. So these are sort of Soviet-era systems. Uh, but, you know, they do Mach 10. They can take out big, uh, distant, high-level bombers and fighters. So I think you'll see that 
that President Biden is pushing those countries to supply that immediately to Ukraine. And then also, you know, I think uh, it was referenced in the report just ahead of me, but it's really important. Some of these drones that the Americans have and the uh, the switch uh, uh, blade uh, uh, systems, which essentially are, are in a backpack, uh, they are fired from a tube very easily in the field. And then they go out into the field and the, the switchback 300 and then there's a 600, uh, they loiter and they can take out personnel on the ground and they can also uh, take out tanks and armor. And that's really been the, the big problem right now because the Ukrainians can defend the cities, but in terms of going after this artillery that's hitting them from you know, 18, 20 miles away, that's, that's posed another problem. So, so some of the equipment uh, that is coming through with, with each NATO meeting and each NATO effort is very important. And I think you'll also see this conversation on the table about the MiGs that uh, Poland might uh, give to the Ukrainians to fly on their own, these 28 MiGs that originally they were going to push through Ramstein Air Base. Uh, and then the, the Americans said, no, we, we don't want to be seen to be flying missions against uh, Russian aircraft from a, an American NATO base or from a NATO base anywhere, for that matter. I think that that those planes are still on the table. And by the way, President Biden will just not meet with NATO, but I think you'll also possibly, depending on security, see him in Poland meeting with refugees and, and really uh, appearing as the leader of the free world in this. OK, Dana, always good to hear your thoughts. Dana Lewis joining us live there from London. Thank you. Thanks.